everybody today to our November Women's Networking Group meeting for the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and really pleased to introduce our speaker, Ryan Wagner, who is here today from Robert Fine and Associates in Framingham. So thank you for braving the, the sun glare and the traffic this morning to be here. Um, Ryan is a, um, an accomplished speaker and also a fairly accomplished um, professional in his industry. He's been recognized for success uh, by being awarded the Client Builder Diamond, Tier 1 and Tier 2 Awards, MDRT, Leaders Club, Inner Circle, Next Generation, and 4 Under 40 Recognition. So, how did he get there? Um, he's become successful in just his fourth year of practice in his unique and non-traditional approach to not only finance and insurance, but relationships. <laughs> And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Ryan prides himself that many of his clients have become friends and enjoys spending time with them and their families, along with his wife, Jess, and two sons, Ben, three, and Jack, one. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Ryan, who's going to tell us how to follow in his footsteps. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks very much for uh, inviting me today, Leanne. Very happy to be here. Uh, we were going to talk about referrals, but I figured uh, we can scrap that and just talk about the election for like two hours. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if your day didn't get consumed with that yesterday. <laughs> um, so just to kind of wrap up what, with what Leanne said, so just to give you a quick little background about why you're going to listen to me talk to something about something. Um, so I would assume that there might even be some financial you know, advisors in the room or most people have probably spoken to one if they have one personally or if they... Uh, have met one at a networking event, and you probably realize that there's a lot of similarities maybe between you and, and, and us in that we have to, in order to grow our business, we have to get referrals. The only way we're going to survive is to just continuously get in front of new people. And there's favorable ways to do that and unfavorable ways to do that. And just kind of by a combination of, I would think, you know, a little bit of luck, uh, training, mentorship, and just kind of who I am as a person has led me to have some modest success in that area. And uh, I've been able to talk to other people in my industry uh, about kind of what I do and how it's unique and different. I think that's uh, kind of really where uh, the success comes, is that you've got to do things differently than everybody else if you want to have different results, right? So I wanted to first start off by just making this interactive, right? So the slides are not pretty because slides are slides, right? So I don't spend much time on making those look good. Uh, so what I wanted to talk about first is just where, you know, and feel free to just kind of shout them out. I'm going to write them on the board here. Where are you getting your referrals from now? Clients. Existing clients. I'm a lefty and a guy, so I don't have great handwriting, so I apologize in advance. Animal, animal millennial, so I've had yeah. spell check my whole life and I don't know how to spell. So. <laughs> Organizations such as BNI, Chamber of Commerces. BNI, Chambers, Friends. Yeah. Friends? Mm -hmm. Marketing. Be more specific with marketing. Yeah. Lots of contact. Okay. This one. So is that a referral or is that a client acquisition, right? So if I'm sending out somebody a newsletter, that's marketing, but that's not a referral from something oh, that's different. Okay, so we're talking, we can talk all day about you know how to acquire clients, but this is a very specific way to acquire, acquire clients, and that's getting an introduction or a referral. Social media. Social media? Um, like business partners for me, that would be realtors. Perfect. So uh, we'll say <coughs> business partners. Social media. Um, refer <coughs> referral agency. I actually have a, a company that I'm a career and life coach. Okay. And that, that agency refers out to different, it's a referral agency. Got it. So do you pay for yeah. referrals? Okay. Yeah. So we'll call, I'll just call it like a referral service. Former colleagues from 
biggest job? Um, Anybody else have anything you want to add to the list? Go ahead. Um, specific people who work in, okay, for example, therapists might refer to me. So I have started to develop, you know, sometimes <coughs> with financial advice. So I don't know. If she you said um, business partners. So that's like, well, I'll call that centers of influence, COI. Okay, those okay. are other people that are working with similar customers or clients that you can have commonality with, right? That's what you're... Yeah. Okay. You have separate reasons for seeing the client. But you share the same type. Yeah. Got it. So that's a good list. So now we know where referrals come from, right? So we're starting really basic here. How strong are the referrals that you get from those people? All right, so that's the next question. So let's see, well, before I skip, actually, sorry. Are there any on here that we didn't necessarily that we didn't what, cover? What so nesting? nesting. So there's really two. Who said to ask that question? So I can. Okay. So there's really two um, different ways to. There, there's vertical um, referrals and then there's horizontal, right? Well, I did that the opposite way. No, horizontal, vertical. So vertical is you know I'm working with the same business type. Mm -hmm. Horizontal would be more I get into a business. And then I, you know, as I'm in that one particular office building, I'm getting referred to the next cubicle, the next office, the next, you know, CEO. So you stay within that one building and you're building a relationship and a uh, rapport and a reputation just right there. Okay. Um, so that's business vertical. Those are kind of related. I always go off of those back to back. Uh, vendors are kind of the business partners. Center of influence we talked about. One thing nobody mentioned was competition, right? So. I'm a big believer in, you know, my, my keep your enemies closer mentality. So I love to meet my competition. And as a matter of fact, so I'm a financial advisor and I saw somebody's uh, card at the table there. I didn't catch the name because I saw it really quickly, but great marketing job, whoever's the other financial person, because it says daily money manager, right? I am not a daily money manager. If I run a colossal client that wants me to sit in front of a computer all day and do day trades, I tell them straight away that I'm not your guy. That's not how I operate my practice. So I would love to, I pulled up her card, but I don't have it like in here to my bag, to send clients to them because it's, it's, I need to have that service. So there's no reason why competition can be a bad thing, okay? Everybody has their own niche because everybody wants to be differentiated anyways. So sometimes it works out. So, Going back to where I was transitioning here. So you have all these different sources of getting referrals, right? There's different levels of referrals though. So like, let's say for example, you work with an existing client, okay? That's where a lot of our existing referrals are gonna come from. And the existing client says, yeah, I will, uh, I'll, I'll, send them a, I'll send them an email or whatever and I'll tell them to get a hold of you. Is that like a strong referral? That's like what I call the sit and wait. So you're like, okay. And then a week or two goes by and then you have to make that awkward connection back to your existing client and say, hey, you know, John never reached out. Is everything okay? Oh yeah, sorry, he, he said he wasn't interested or something like that. You don't know, it kind of goes in the ether. Or you, even worse than that, where you get the, you know, I don't know if you've ever experienced this with a financial advisor, but they're kind of infamous and notorious for it is you get the LinkedIn list and, the, and the, you know, the person says, who do you know in here I can talk to? Or who should I not talk to? And then that's like a warm slash cold call, right? Because you're not even getting an introduction to that person at all. You're just getting like verbal permission to basically talk to them, but it's still very cold. So, but that's technically, I guess, in the referral category. Um, virtual introduction. So that's where I think social media comes in, uh, whether that be on LinkedIn or Facebook or text messaging or anything, or even email, I put the virtual introduction in. So you just, you know, are doing a group text or a email to both parties and saying, hey, Joe, meet Sue, Sue, meet Joe, and have at it. And then the best is the face-to-face -face introduction, right? If you could get face-to-face -face introductions all day long, you know, your, your success rate of getting another meeting with that person is through the roof because it's really hard to 
run away. <laughs> you know, if you're at a networking event or a party. So here's the biggest thing that I find when I talk is the biggest thing that's lacking. Consistency. Okay? So I think if we had a little more time and we went through to, to, to the point that was brought up before about marketing, like how do we acquire customers and clients? The number one preferred way and the least expensive way to usually do that is through referrals, right? But does it, do we, anybody have a consistent process that they do every day, every time, every client to get repeatable results? Or do these referrals kind of come in haphazardly and when, they, when, when you have a good relationship or you know, get a, start off your Monday right with a nice voicemail or an email? And that's kind of most people's referral plan. So if you are doing something, is you, are you tracking it? So do you know if you have what's working and what isn't? I'm not gonna go any further into that, but that's pretty much, you'll see what I do. Um, and so what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step way to get referrals. Make it real simple. And the real meat and potatoes though, comes from, I think it's step five, which is not really even getting referrals, but becoming referable, okay? I, through training, and just through, again, being like who I am as a person, I do not like the first steps I'm gonna show you, but you have to do it, because that's the repeatable, easy stuff, and that's the shorter term stuff, as you'll see. The becoming referable part is a delayed gratification. You have to put in a lot of work, and you have to put in a lot of time, and you have to keep your fingers crossed and it's gonna pay off. But it definitely does. So you've gotta do both. I kind of stumbled upon that referable portion, um, like I said, because I wasn't a fan of the first few steps. So here's my pie chart of referrals that I get that aren't from clients, okay? So, as we were talking about people that are seeing the same types of clients that I need to see. Somebody, I mean, every business owner, every homeowner, everybody that drives a car has property casualty insurance, right? So I need to talk to, I, they're working with people that I want to talk to, and I refer tons of business to them. So I'm talking to a client that's, I mean, it really doesn't matter how much wealth they have, Almost nobody carries an umbrella policy. Like I bet nobody in this room has one, or if they do, very few. <laughs> Good. But a lot of the clients I meet don't, and it's a huge liability for them. So I refer a lot of business to property casualty agents. CPAs, all my clients need to get taxes done. And I love numbers, but I don't love them that much. So I need to refer out business to CPAs. And then they also obviously know everything about a client's uh, financial life. Attorneys, trusts, wills, all that kind of stuff, that's obviously a very uh, you know, reciprocal relationship. Payroll companies when I'm working with businesses, mortgage brokers, I mean all this stuff is pretty self-explanatory for how our relationships work. So step one, when you wanna get referrals, is you have to plant the seed. It is really super awkward to just come out of left field and ask for a referral, okay? why nobody does it. So the first thing you have to do is just plant the seed. And so here's how you plant the seed. If it's with a client, okay, or a customer, you just say, you know, Leanne, I'm gonna pick on you since you're front and center, and I know you. <laughs> so it's gonna be, Leanne, I'm so happy we're able to get together today. I, we gotta thank Jim for setting this up because you know, without Jim introducing us, we never would have met. So it's real subtle, okay? So I'm just like saying that I'm very happy to see her, I'm saying that I wouldn't be here unless I was introduced by somebody, okay? And if you, you know, depending on the relationship and the situation, you might go a little further and say something like, you know, uh, you know, Joe has, you know, he's like one of my best clients. He refers me to everybody. I don't know what I would do without Joe because, you know, he, he, he's referred me to like 10 people this year. So you see how I'm really building up Joe. It's not about me, but I'm just letting Leanne know that my business is, is revolves around being introduced to people. Okay. If you're working with business owners, 
I switch it up. And I ask them, how do they get their business? And everybody's gonna say, along the way, if you just keep prodding, oh, I get you know, referred from, from customers. Some people it's a large part, some people it's not. That's when you jump in and you say, that's how I get my business too. That's how I get my business from referrals. So that you're planting the seed, okay? So it's important that you do that. It doesn't seem like an important step, but when we get to step two, it's important. Giving to get. So anybody that's been in B&I has heard of the book, Giver's Gain. Um, I've actually never read it, but everybody tells me that basically what this is is uh, Giver's Gain. So if you just give to get right out of the gate without planting the seed, then they don't know that they owe you anything, okay? So it's very important to just let them know how you need to operate your business without telling them necessarily this is how I need to operate my business. <laughs> Giving to get is, I can't overstate the importance of it. It's not just about you know, giving a referral. Sometimes it's about giving value to somebody. Just a bit of advice. In my situation, I can do that very easily by telling somebody about something that I have nothing to do with, like property and casualty insurance or mortgage or trusts or anything like that. And then if you're working with a center of influence, a business partner, the best thing you can do is give them a referral first. Somebody's got to take the, the leap. Okay. And if you're, I'm working with clients and I want to be introduced to other clients like them, I will help them by connecting them with other professionals that I know and just getting to know about them. Okay. So this step is very obvious for some, but a lot of people miss the first one. And then you get kind of gun shy after a little while because you're connecting people you're giving and you're not getting anything back and you might wonder why. And it's because they don't know. It's not their fault, but they didn't really know. They think you're just a really nice person. They didn't know that, oh, maybe I should connect them with somebody. Which then leads us to the third step. Which, so if you get somebody that's not real sharp and you let them, you plant the seed, right? And then you give them some referrals and then they're like, thanks. And then, you know, you're like, oh, you know. You know they, maybe they didn't have anybody. So then you send them some more and they're like, oh, you're the best. And then you're like, oh, all right, you know, try this one more time, three strikes and you're out, and you send them somebody else, and they still don't get it. That's when you call them up for lunch. And they're gonna say yes 100% of the time, because you give them you know, three referrals that have turned into business, hopefully, for that. And you sit down and you have lunch, and you go, so, you know, how'd it go with that last person? Oh, great. Um, how many how many people was that by the way? Like I I, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, it's, I, 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 it was the third guy you sent me. One of them didn't work out. But it was that was the third guy you sent me. Oh, oh. just silence. <laughs> See if they're gonna get this. And if they don't, then you gotta say, you know. So I really like to have a reciprocal relationship, and I've met another mortgage broker that I'm gonna give a shot to. And I just didn't. I wanted to take you to lunch and break up with you because they didn't want you to think that I was a jerk, right? So you can come across as being all noble in this. Uh, but it's going to get their attention. And they might say, oh, man, no, I got somebody. I've been, I'm sorry. You know, I've been really busy. I got somebody right now I want to talk to you about. It's happened eight times out of ten. Then there's two other times where they're like, I'm really sorry. I just, you know, I haven't found the right fit. I said, no problem. But it's a business, and I need to, therefore, reward somebody that's going to, you know, understand how this works. So that's how I ask with business clients. I don't ask that like that, obviously, with a client client, right? You can't, you know, expect that from a client. So, and this is the part that when I just did not like. This is what forced me to figure out another way, because when you're with a client, my personality is if they don't refer me, I just haven't done enough. I, got, I, I, I feel like asking is uh, very selfish, you know, like I, I've already done business with them to some degree, so they've already rewarded me for my efforts, so I feel like anything extra, this is just me personally, I feel like anything extra is being very self-focused. So I, if I don't get referrals from a client, I just, how do I give them more? Like, what do I do more for them? How can I add more value to them, so, or build a better relationship with them, so that they're more comfortable referring me? That's me personally, okay? but. Here's, you know, we kind of already talked a little bit about some of these things, but 
really when you're with either a business owner or a client, the, the, you have to be specific when you ask. So like if I ask you right now what your favorite song is, you can't name it because every song you ever heard in your life pops in your head. But if I say what was the last concert you went to, you're gonna know that very quickly. You gotta be specific. And once you can narrow it down and be specific, there, you know, there, let me think about it, right? You're gonna get the let me think about it. Well, everybody's got every person they've ever met in their cell phone or in their email. So you should be able to right then and there get them to go through the favorite button on their phone and give you their mom or dad or somebody. You know what I mean? Like, like it's really, it shouldn't be that hard. But again, I am just not comfortable with this. Comfortable doing it with business, not comfortable doing it with clients. So before we get into the, 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 the um, referable part, there's LinkedIn. So who here is on LinkedIn? Who here uses LinkedIn? Okay. What do you use LinkedIn for? Anybody? See if I have a common connection to somebody that I'm going to meet or just met. Okay. And I also, in my profession, mortgage business, I actually use it to look up people's job histories. So. Oh, perfect. Okay. So a little, little, a little super smooth happy. things. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, as a career coach, I work with people on, you know, getting their profiles and running them strong and, you know, showing them how they can make connections from, you know, the first connection or use the second connection to get back and use the first connection to connect them to Perfect. someone. Yeah. Perfect. And all the jobs and the companies and right. all the professional organizations. Yeah, I just used to try to hire people, especially people that have left the company, technicians that I would love to get back. Got so it. I try to communicate with them. Okay, so anybody else? Did I see no? No? Okay. So LinkedIn can be used for good and for evil. Okay. LinkedIn is getting a bad rap, I think, because a lot of people are uh, using it the wrong way and like other people are feeling like they're just, anytime they get a LinkedIn message, it's like, oh, somebody trying to sell me something because it's just businesses trying to connect with other you know, CEOs or get an appointment or whatever. So here's how I use LinkedIn. I will connect, well first off, you've got to build your connection list. And it can't be like Facebook where you just click everybody. That's the first rule. So how you do that, if you already had that, is you go through, so there's how many weeks in the year? 52, right? How many letters in the alphabet? 26. So you take one letter every two weeks, and you go through your LinkedIn contacts. So this week would be, next two weeks would be A. And you're gonna, in message, everybody, the last name A, and you're going to ask them to get a cup of coffee. And if they won't see you for a cup of coffee, they'll leave. Okay? <laughs> that simple. Because the next step is going to be you're going to use your list as a resource to refer people to. And if somebody looks on your LinkedIn list and says, can you connect me to Leanne? And I'm like, I don't even know who Leanne is. That doesn't look good. So you have to purge. Okay? And then when you're watching football or Desperate Housewives or whatever it is, <laughs> That's when you go on LinkedIn and you, you know, maybe hunt for some people, connections, or like people you met at a networking event and you send them some emails. That's kind of my downtime for that. So build your network. Send out emails. Just talked about that. So this is like a little bit more in depth, but here, let me just click through this and I'll tell you kind of the, at, the end of the, at the end of the day what we're going to do. So if I connect with somebody on LinkedIn, my connection message to them usually is because I'm meeting them, I've met them in some way, shape, or form. And I say, pleasure to meet you, love to get together, further the relationship, further the conversation, have a cup of coffee. By the way, take a look at my connection list and let me know if there's anybody I can introduce you to. Okay? So I'm 99% of the time getting a cup of coffee, and 99% of the time, nobody looks, takes the time to look at your connection list. However, I now have 100% permission, implied permission, to look at their connection list because I asked them to do the same for me. So I'm just assuming that we're going to have a cup of coffee. They're going to ask me for some referrals or introductions to people, and I can look at theirs and ask for some introductions or referrals to people that I'm not connected to. So that is how you give first. Okay. 
and that is how you can get referrals from LinkedIn extremely easily um, without coming across as a super aggressive, you know, creep that's stalking somebody and just printed out their LinkedIn friend list. Okay. <laughs> so here's the here's my favorite part. Go ahead. Do you have a question? I do. Sorry. Um, no. Great. I have a LinkedIn account with my name, which I never ever use, and I'm just at the point where I want to jump into it. I have a small business, so I took a, I just to start. Should my should I have a business network, you know, LinkedIn account, or should I not really have have a personal? Because no. I'm trying to refer my business. I, so it's not like Facebook. Yeah. So if you if you're if you are the business, yes, then you absolutely want a LinkedIn account. So with with, with my business name. With you. My, because when you hand out a business card to me at a networking event, is it not going to have your name on it? Yeah. It's going to have your name on it, right? Yeah. So that's who I'm going to look up. Is I'm going to look up you on LinkedIn. Oh. Okay. So if you had a big company, sometimes companies have you know LinkedIn pages with like employees under them and things like that. But if it's just you, yeah. you probably need to talk to her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you probably, you know what I mean, and she can help you out with that. But my advice is. That's your like virtual business card. You know, if you don't have a website, that's like a great first website for people. It's it's almost um, it's a more business Facebook page. So everybody will tell you you have to have a business Facebook page too, you know, for social media. Yeah. But I think LinkedIn especially, you know, has that added dimension of connections that you can view and trade. Whereas a Facebook business page really doesn't have that. You have followers and likes, and it's not the same. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not the same animal. So. Okay. Um, Definitely you LinkedIn page. That's my advice. Okay, she might be had different. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> I have a question here. Since I have uh, my own business too, my strategy has been to like connect with almost as many people as I can. As long as I either know them or I know where they work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get people who work on oil rigs in Texas mm -hmm. trying to link them with me. Like, I right. Or, or I, might, I might email them back, I mean LinkedIn them back and say, you please let me know how we can how we know each other. Right. Because I like to know people. But then other times I just you know when they say um, add to your connections. Right. And and somehow LinkedIn figured out that those people know people that you know. Already. Yeah, it's like through their email address yeah, so and I things. Always, I always ask them to connect because I feel like that's a good thing. What value does it give? Make me feel popular. <laughs> 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 um, I guess I feel like then I'm more kind of say my client wants to know uh, what is looking for a job at say um, Lesley University. Sure. Then I would potentially have more connections with Lesley University that I could help them with. And so could you reach out to anybody at Lesley University and say I have a client that is looking for a position there? The ones that are on my LinkedIn account, I'd have to really think. So that's, that's the, you know what I mean? Like, so just having a connection doesn't give the value. You have to have the relationship behind the value. Right, right, right. So I'm all for connecting to as many people as you want, yeah. but that's why I have the cup of coffee rule. You know, if, I, if they don't know me for a cup of coffee or if they don't have that time, I can't refer somebody to them if they won't even give me a cup of coffee. So it's not going to go anywhere. And then it just looks bad on me. You know, oh yeah, I know this guy from Leslie College. We send you over to him and then he just, you know, goes in the ether because he doesn't know who you are. So. Okay, yeah, no, I would Okay, thank you. That's my mm -hmm. philosophy on it. Um, so, I didn't like asking for referrals, but I had to. And that's cognitive dissonance. <laughs> so, you either figure out a new way or you, you know, struggle through it. I figured out a new way. So, I am a, I'm a helper. I like to help people. It's just who I am by nature. And I decided that I could help people, I could have fun, and just do things a little bit differently than everybody else all at the same time. So everybody in this room has competition, right? I would think. Some, some people might not, but most people do. What separates you from your competition? I'm kind of hogging that side of the board, so I'm going to go on the side. So, this mouse over now, just walk in front of this. So, if you aren't a subject matter expert, you can become one pretty easily nowadays by starting a blog, okay? And AM radio shows are looking for content all the time, okay? <laughs> but you become an expert immediately just by doing something like that. Um, 
get involved in leadership things in your industry and join industry groups. You have to think what everybody's doing is what you don't want to do, okay? So having a Facebook business page, because we were just talking about it, I don't think adds any value in today's day and age. I don't think, I, 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 don't, I don't think you, I don't think it hurts, but I also don't think it's going to like, you know, take off your business because you have one. And I don't think anybody's gonna not do business with you because you don't have one. It's just something that everybody has nowadays. So my whole philosophy is to do things differently. I actually just added this last one today because I do a lot of networking and I was super impressed by somebody that I met at a networking event recently and it takes a lot to do that to me. So I met him at a networking event and did the, I did the usual email connect on LinkedIn. That's what I do. She replied back and connected back with me. I was like, that was great. Two days later, handwritten note, honor stationery, the master business card, Ryan, really nice to meet you. I was like, I have never gotten a handwritten note from somebody I met at a networking event. You know, it's always email, LinkedIn, or nothing. Never mind a handwritten note. I tell everybody about that now because I was so blown away by it. And I think that's the impression you're trying to get. And she got it for a 35 cent stamp. So, you know, it, it makes a huge difference when you do something that not everybody else is doing. So, you talked about marketing before, or somebody asked about marketing before. This is how. I do marketing. I do it differently. I'm, I get approached all the time by people that want to do like you know print media ads and you know um, buy space doing this and that. And it is not my thing at all. I am trying to do something different. So I have season tickets to the Red Sox, to the Celtics, and to the Bruins. Okay. Yeah. And it costs a ton of money, but it's fun and it's not work, <laughs> and I get to either make a client's day by, by letting them take their family to the four Red Sox tickets that we have, or I get to, this is my favorite thing to do, I will, and, and you can totally take this, whatever it is that you love, just take this principle and apply it to that, okay? So you don't have to do Red Sox tickets, you don't like Red Sox. But I will get the four Red Sox tickets and I'll take you know, a center of influence, right, like CPA. Or I'll take a really good client that you know I don't ever want to leave me. Or I'll take um, a prospect, and I'll just say, "Hey, I got a couple extra tickets. Why don't you invite somebody?" Why doesn't the CPA invite somebody? And now I'm meeting whoever they're bringing on a very favorable basis in a face-to-face -face introduction. It has nothing to do with business. So they have their guard down talking to me, they love me, got great seats, I'm paying for everything, and, and it's just a good time. So at the end of that event, I just say, you know, I'd love to get to know you better, let's grab a cup of coffee. And my cup of coffee is my go-to. And they're like, who's gonna say no to that? You just had a great time with me. And unless you just you don't click, but it's not gonna happen. So that is just one really simple idea, but it's a twist on just like, you know, having season tickets to something and giving them out. There's no real value to give them out unless you can't go, you know, with season tickets, there's 81 Red Sox games, it's hard to go to every one of those. I like to golf, I also like to sail, but golf is the ultimate, you know, exactly, you know, transition from what I just said, where if I'm gonna golf with somebody, we're gonna do a foursome, I'm gonna fill it up with either one or two people and ask one of them to bring somebody. And I'm gonna play with a guy that I don't know. So that's, Whatever you enjoy doing, that's really the mentality you need to have for how to become referable, is just whatever you like, involve your clients in it. Or if you don't have clients that like it, start to acquire clients and customers that like that stuff. And then have them bring people that'll also like it. And then it just becomes natural. You're just at a party, you're just at a social event, and all of a sudden, it clicks. And it's like, wow, this person is a great person, and they think you're a great person, and it's because you enjoy similar things. And then all of a sudden the relationship just develops. So here's some other like silly marketing ideas. So I do, a, that's supposed to be nice, not suit nice, sorry. That's, that's uh, my bad, my fault. Suit night at my house. So I have a guy that does custom suits. So I like to give back to him. So I'm like, everybody come over to my house. We're gonna have it catered. You guys can bring a friend. 
and he's gonna measure your pursuits and I'll like, oh, you get a free shirt out of it. And I'll like, I'll pay for the shirt or something for the free, like as the enticement for everybody to go. So who doesn't want, like for guys, that's like, I'm in. Um, <laughs> Ryan's Day of Fun. I've taken guys to, you know, Dave and Buster's to play, you know, um, like video games. We've gone like, um, we've gone uh, go-karts at uh, F1 Boston. But I don't just make it like, okay, we went and played go-karts. You gotta make it a wow event. Something that people are like gonna go back and talk about. Something that if you went to, you would be impressed. So try to always do um, open bar, catered food. Sometimes there's a prize, a gift. So on the top, so this is a huge hit for you guys. So do you know they do cooking classes there? Where? It's on the top. At the mall? Yeah. So just take, I mean, like, cooking class, Wednesday night. Let's go, somebody grab a cheap bottle of wine. Let's go make whatever they're making. It's an awesome way to just go and hang out. Um, watch party. So I'm doing a Patriots watch party on December 18th uh, at Jillian's. Renting out a whole big space. People can go bowling, play pool, watch the game. And it's because it's December 18th. Be <laughs> uh, you want to come? Oh, it's uh, 3 o'clock. Too many of these. 3 o'clock. Seriously, uh, we're actually doing a holiday gift exchange, just to like kind of amp it up a little bit. So we're gonna do like a little play on Yankee Swap for everybody when they get there, because it's December 18th, so I figure why not. Um, simple, just, you know, sushi party at the house. Uh, golf, like, you know, I already had golf on there, but there's a ton of event type of marketing things that you can do with customers or clients that nobody else is doing. That's not even on anybody's radar. And it puts you in a whole different atmosphere with those people. And then they can't wait to tell everybody about you and about the great time they had. It's just all about doing, knowing what people like and inviting them to things that you enjoy as well and it just organically happens. This is the easiest thing I can ever tell anybody to do. So this is a baby block on craftyfamily.com. I think it costs $35 with shipping. I'm at the age where my friends are spitting out kids like once a weekend. So, <laughs> so all my friends, you know, I get, I get all kind of sneaky with them and try to ask them so they don't know what I'm actually asking them. But I'm like, I need the first and middle and last name. I need to know the hospital, the time, the length, the weight, and that's pretty much it. And then they get this block that gets shipped right to their house like I said, I think it's like $35 with shipping. And as somebody that you know has recently had a couple of kids, that's still on my desk. The onesie that I got that got you know pooped on the first day is in the trash. <laughs> so uh, it's a it's a there's not one person doesn't matter how much the money they make or how little money they make that doesn't appreciate something like that because it's got like little footprints on it and it's just a nice little reminder. So again, doing something different than everybody else is doing. Everybody sends a the onesie or the toy or whatever the case may be. I don't know what anybody else is doing with those. Does anybody here go to like trade conferences? No, not really. Sometimes. Yeah. So, if you do, you know, it, it's if you're at like a nice hotel at a destination, something like that. Grab a postcard from the gift shop. Write them a little. Hey, Leanne, it was great to, uh, I'm at this uh, great conference in Phoenix. I uh, heard a great idea that I want to share with you. When I get back, talk to you soon. And you just pop it in the mail. Make sure you do it from Phoenix, not postmark from Massachusetts. <laughs> that looks a little sketchy. Um, and then just a couple of closing quotes on this like totally new idea that you may be hearing is, so does all this cost money? Absolutely. But a lot of times, doing nothing can cost more than doing something, okay? So in my business, I'm, a very, I'm in a very competitive industry. People are always calling my clients, I'm always calling other people's clients because you just that's how the business you get referred to people, people aren't happy. I wanna make sure my clients are extremely happy. So whether I am doing this to get referrals from them or I'm doing this to just build a wall around them because the next guy that comes along isn't gonna do what I'm doing. They're not going to have that type of relationship, that type of fun. So it's kind of like bundling, you know, it makes it harder to believe. Uh, <laughs> and I kind of already said this, but you really have to know what people like and they dislike. Otherwise it doesn't work. Um, 
always invite everybody to everything, okay? Um, I'm the, speaking on my other side of my mouth on this, because you get credit for the invite. So if you have existing clients or customers and you can reach out to them on a non-business basis for something, game changer. Every time you reach out to a customer or client, it's usually about business. So if I can reach out to you about something that you might not even be interested in, I mean, I invited somebody from New Jersey to go to the Patriots watch party just because it was like, hey, I mean, maybe you'll be around, I don't know. But, oh no, I can't, thanks very much, I appreciate the invite. So it, it just keeps it fresh and you're not just the whatever person to them, okay? And for the, going back to what we looked at, going back to you know, the centers of influence, this stuff is so powerful for those relationships because not only can they bring people to these events, but you're gonna become their best friend. Like I can't, I can't explain the relationship I have with some of these property and casualty and mortgage brokers and things like that because we just do all these things together. And then I don't have to, I don't even think about if they have a client that they didn't give to me or somebody else because I know the relationship that we have now. So it's not, you get more from less people as opposed to having to meet 100 mortgage brokers that can be one. So this is just a little bit more of the same. Um, the one thing I'll talk about, so clarity of vision, 99% versus 100%. I should get a couple of laughs out of this room because I've never done this in front of all women before. But I always say, if I went home and told my wife I loved her 99%, it's a big difference between that and 100%. It's not just 1%, right? It's a huge difference. As a matter of fact, she's heard me do this. And she talks about all these things that I do. I mean, she hears all these things that I do, and then I got in big trouble. I had to start doing way more stuff. <laughs> she's like, how come, you know, like Christmas and birthdays? And I'm like, yeah, that's a good point. So now I got this huge list on my phone of all these things that I think of uh, that she talks about. Um, the biggest challenge with this approach is that you're gonna, it's delayed satisfaction. You're gonna put out a lot of effort, a lot of money, and a lot of time, and it's not necessarily gonna come back right away. You don't know where it's gonna come back. So I just had a, a person ask me um, that wanted to split the event with me, what's the ROI? I, I don't measure it on an event to event basis. That's just not how my business works. I look at my annual marketing budget versus what I make, you know, versus what I make annually, and then that's my ROI. But I can't tell you you know, from one event what my ROI is, because it doesn't work that way. It could be the third event that that person goes to. I don't know, you know? So, the last step, so that was step five, big long step. And the last step in trying to get referrals is to bribe people. <laughs> Utilize a re rewards program. So depending on what you do, depending on the clientele you're seeing, if there's something that you can do to reward them, that's fantastic. Remember when you're working with other business professionals that really the best reward program you can have is just to give them back another referral. That's how the relationship builds momentum. I think. Oh, so does all this work? So here's a couple, two quick examples. So I went to Northeastern University. So I started off with really, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight friends that I met from Northeastern that had become clients of mine eventually. And then as you can see, it actually gets cut off. It goes way down here. Bojini, one guy, referred me to one person, who then referred me to all these people, and then this person referred me to a whole bunch more. And it's all because Bojini, actually all of us, went to an event. And then Bojini brought Reynolds to the next event. That was my buddy, you gotta meet him. I live next door to him now. Great. And that's what it has turned into, just from other people doing this and following, you know, following the, trusting the process. So here is where my breakdown, so I said, do you measure it and what works and what doesn't? So here's a breakdown of where my clients have come from for the last 12 months, okay? So great relationship with my mortgage broker and my CPA. I get a ton of business for my existing clients by doing marketing events with them. Like I said, they bring somebody with them. Golf, going on joint cases with other people in my office that, that doesn't do much. 
Uh, this PNC person has already been replaced <laughs> uh, just because it's way low. I've given them way more. Uh, people that I've just met, joint work, like with other financial advisors, competition. Um, general marketing events, and then I sell as well. And I've met people doing that too. So that's my breakdown of where I've got clients over the last 12 months. I actually just updated that last night before I came, so it's all accurate. So it works. It just takes relationships. And people nowadays are extremely skeptical of nice people. It's unfortunate. But if you're a good person and you want to give, it's immediate, what are you doing? How long is this going to last? When is this going to stop being fake? And so that's why it takes a while, because you really have to break through that barrier and show and prove people that it's just who you are as a person. And then it starts to flow. Because then they, you know, and, and, and you've got to keep giving to them the whole time too. So it's definitely um, a combination of, you know, asking people for referrals at the beginning and then doing the relationship building stuff uh, all along the way. So there's a million more ideas that I have. Can't share everything with everybody, right? Uh, How about coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want. You got it, I'll call you. <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions? How am I doing on time, Leanne? What's that? Uh, perfect. I thought so. Yeah. Right. Um, so your clients are probably with you, hopefully, for a long time, right? That's the idea. Yeah. So I have clients that I have to turn over a lot, because they may see me for two months, three months, or maybe six months, or maybe I'll see them for three months and then in two years. So it's like a much faster turnover. Right. So I think I would have to focus more on the COI. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But so, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, but those are people I know already. So I feel like I don't know. How good them, Bring a little presence, I guess. But well, I don't know. So you're hundred percent right. So if you're in a business where your sales cycle is more transactional, a shorter sales cycle, yeah. and you want referrals then you definitely put 90% of your eggs in the COI basket, the, the strategic alliance basket, right? So the first question you have to ask yourself is, the people you're already aligned with, are they good? Are they catcher's mitts? Are you feeding them stuff and they're not giving you anything back? I mean, some, I, you need that sometimes because you have to offer a service to your clients. They said, you know this person, you have to be able to refer them to somebody, but if they're not giving you back anything, then you time to go shopping and you go to networking events like crazy. So, you know, that's, I don't go to networking events for clients. So we didn't really talk about this. I didn't go to networking events for clients. I go to networking events to meet COIs. I'm constantly in search of somebody that's better than what I have for whatever reason. It's a better fit for whatever reason. So perfect example was I had an estate planning attorney that was fantastic, but he was 68 years old and he's already had relationships with financial advisors forever. But I was able to refer clients to him knowing that they were gonna be taken care of, you know, for, perfectly. But I know I was never gonna get anything from him. Two months ago, I met a guy that's 35 years old, is in a, uh, has his own practice that is taken off and doing fantastic. My age, married, kid's gonna be on the way. I'm like, we need to hook up because we're gonna have the same trajectory. So even though, I'm gonna still probably refer my ultra high net worth clients to the older guy because I need to know that they're taken care of. Yeah. Everybody else that doesn't need a $10,000 estate plan, he's my guy. And I, I mean, that's exactly the conversation we had. He goes, that's who I work with now, so it's perfect. I don't even want the big guys right now. So that's, if you're not getting business from them, you've gotta replace them. And you can't feel bad about it, it's, it's business. We still invite them over for cocktails, but you know. Anybody else? Any questions? No. All right. Oh, that was really good. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.